Everybody, this is Lowell Thomas. Somebody has asked me, just what is this American way that we talk of defending today? And what's ahead for us Americans? Well, I'm going to answer those questions by telling a chapter of the story of America, the story of how we have created a land of opportunity here. Now, precisely, what is this American way? Democracy? Free enterprise, our civil rights, freedom of the press and worship? Yes, of course. It was the toil and sweat of men and women that built this great country of ours. And today, with the united purpose to build a strong and progressive and free nation, American men and women are still doing their share, whether it be a mechanic at his lathe, or a laborer, or the women in the office, or the farmer, yes, and the doctor, the investment banker, and the women in the home, and millions of other Americans too, men and women who work hard, who save a few dollars, or many dollars, and send them out looking for a profitable job to do to help build the nation. Industries are created by the coming together of men, private savings, and productive ideas. This combination develops new inventions by the thousands and spreads our commerce and thereby gives more and more people employment and greater purchasing power. That is the way it has always been in this country, for that is the pattern of the American system. To see how this pattern works, we would only have to go back a few generations to any street in any American town. Good evening, David. Good evening, Mr. Hawley. Nice evening, isn't it? Yes, indeed. Don't let that oil drip on you. No, no, I'll be careful. Oh, good night. Good night, Mr. Hawley. seen you for uh, quite some time. Well, I've been pretty busy in the shop. Well, uh, sit down. I'll be with you in just a minute. Total these drafts and bring them back. Yes, sir. Well, it's a nice piece of work, Mr. McPhail. Well, it should be. Cost me enough when your father made it. Well, you know, well, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. What, about my desk? Oh, no, sir. But about the shop. You see, I've been running it all by myself. Doing pretty good, too. Matter of fact, more business than I can handle. Well, you're very fortunate, young man. I don't know about that. If I could enlarge the shop, I could do a lot more business. Of course, that'll take money and... I see. And uh, you leading up to a loan? Well, in a way, sir. But I wasn't exactly thinking in terms of a loan. I thought maybe you might come into the business with me as a partner. You put up the money, I'll do the work and supply the management. And what am I to get out of all this if I become your money partner? Well, you... And I said, if. Well, you'll be making a profit on your investment, of course. And what is more, we'll be making jobs for workers. Our town will grow. And when we get started, we can buy materials in quantities and get them cheaper. Why, everybody will benefit. But I have to have the money to start with. Yes. <clears throat> uh, yes, of course. 
Good night, Mr. McPhail. And that's the way American industries have started and grown and produced better things. Today, of course, we're a big country. We do things on a big scale. So big, we can't depend upon one man or a small group of men to finance them. Modern industry is financed by the individual savings of a great many people. And their savings and men with ideas are brought together by an investment banker. That's how plants with few jobs grow to plants with jobs for many. That's how they come to be owned by thousands of persons who invested their savings. That is the American way. Take almost any of our resources. Before you and I could enjoy them, there had to be someone with an idea of how to use them. And then there had to be dollars to develop them. Once iron ore was only rocks and dust to Minnesota and Michigan, a great natural resource that was useless until men with ideas and men with money were brought together to build railroads to move the ore to the furnaces of Pittsburgh and Chicago and Wheeling, where other men and ideas and money had been brought together to convert it into all kinds of useful commodities, from structural steel skyscrapers and bridges to surgical instruments, from ships and tractors to cooking utensils and even needles and pins. And there was the great resource we call invention, the vast storehouse of ideas in the minds of enterprising Americans, ideas for improving the old ways of doing things, ideas for new machines, new services, inventions that could, when the man with the idea found the men with the money, develop new industries and create jobs for millions and add new comforts and conveniences to the daily lives of Americans. In this collection of patent models, are the forerunners of many of our modern conveniences. Would you believe it? That's the typewriter that John Jones patented in 1852. That was the grandfather of your refrigerator. And how would you like to defend your country with a machine gun like that? Imagine they churned butter with that in 1877. And there's a washing machine and the original tin type. With that as a start, photography has progressed to the motion pictures you are now seeing. And today, we still go forward to the extent that invested savings flow into new enterprise. It's the coming together of materials and ideas and people that builds the future. A people from Albuquerque, from Atlanta, and from the sidewalks of New York. They put their savings together to back an industrial idea or build a new city hall and make jobs for stonemasons and carpenters. Put their savings together to build a paper mill in the south and make jobs for steel workers and electricians. And just so they built a railroad through the Rockies or a schoolhouse in Ohio. Once the blacksmith had only simple tools costing a few dollars, but now every steel worker uses $10,000 worth of tools and equipment and back of each average manufacturing worker is $5,000. By following that pattern, we have become the most fortunate people on earth. And yet some say, times have changed. Our opportunities have gone. Our frontiers have vanished. Opportunities gone in a country as rich in resources as this. Frontiers vanished. Geographical frontiers, perhaps. But today, we face new frontiers, gaze toward new horizons. Those frontiers are in research laboratories and in American ingenuity and resourcefulness. Ingenuity that finds use for surplus cotton by converting it into picture film. Ingenuity that fashions garments from glass and stockings from coal and synthetic rubber from oil. Today, we cross a continent in a few hours a century ago, it took long, weary months. Our American way has proved itself in the merging of men, ideas, and savings to build a great nation. We're going to defend it. We're going to make it better. There must always be opportunity for men to find work to do, for dollars to find work to do. 
for ideas to find outlets. For that is the American way. It is the way forward for free men and free women. <laughs>